What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I just got over here to shop. We're at Mike's over here in his garage. How are you doing, Mike? Complaining about FedEx. <laughs> Complaining about FedEx again. Notice he's got his jacked up. His rear end was leaking. All of a sudden it just appeared. So he ordered him a new cover and the new cover come in today and uh, it was beat up. Looked like it got dropped out of the box too. M Mike, we better stop. Maybe we better stop talking about them. That might be the problem is we're talking about them and, and they're beating up the stuff that's going to them. But he's got it fixed now. So he's got it. He's got the dents and dings out of it. It's all flat. Or he's going on the dyno Monday at Pete Harrell's. So looking forward to seeing how much power that makes with the new big blower. We're working on the big block again today. So let me show you what we got going on. We're going to gap some rings. We got the pistons. Let me show you what happened with those. And we're getting closer to having this thing assembled. Hopefully in the next week or so, we'll have a full, complete... 532 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. Comment, like, and subscribe. If y'all want to support the channel, head on over to turbojohnracing.com, grab some hats and t-shirts. Thanks guys. All right, so there's the cover. That thing is pretty, Mike. Now, lost the bolts. I like that. Look at the <laughs> the box. It come completely out of the box. Yeah. It come, it was probably 100% laying on the floor beside the box and they stuck it back in and put some tape on it. <laughs> Hopefully, Hopefully that don't happen to my parts coming soon. Okay, I'm gonna take all the bad stuff back and said about the shipping companies. They're perfect, they work great, always on time, and they always take care of our stuff. <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah, that's what we're gonna say. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> so I didn't record it last time we were here. Uh, back behind these two plugs, we did put restrictors in, about 100,000 is what we ended up going to. So the oil comes through the motor, comes comes down through the bottom and then goes up through here and then is restricted. Uh, some people say you don't need restrictors. It didn't have restrictors in it. Uh, some people say you do need them, but we're gonna be gapping rings today. So uh, we're gonna use to gap rings. Y'all hold y'all's breath. It's very, it's, it ain't for the faint of heart. I've done it a million times. Occasionally I screwed up, but most of the time I'm pretty good with it. It's a side grinder. Yeah, when I actually brought <laughs> an actual ring grinder. He's got a ring grinder over there. It's manual. But we're using the side grinder, guys. We are using, this thing turned 13,000 RPM from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So I don't know if it's the most uh, safest thing to do, but we're going to use the side grinder here. We're going to change it. We're going to put a regular cutoff wheel on it. And then you have to very carefully hold both of them and then it does do good let me show you something else as well guys so the pistons we were going to get new pistons and so we started looking and started thinking about it and started talking about it and uh, talked to a few people and these are the old pistons that were in the motor and i don't know if you noticed they look a little different um so i went in here and not probably these are 46 cc domes and so i went in all these pistons Pistons were in really good shape. And my game plan at first was to just use them all uh, anyway. But then the thing that kind of got me bird down is the top ring was only a 43,000 ring. So with it only being a 43,000 ring, I was not very happy with that. Um, I could have just got, you know, rings for that. But I mean, I don't know if that's a nitrous thing or I mean, I, I don't know. So um, and a lot of race pistons have those small rings, but we don't have vacuum pumps. We don't have things on the turbo car, so I think it needs a, a wider ring. So my buddy Uncle Mike down there, he's got a buddy down in Wilmington, Leland area. Uh, he has a machine shop, RPM Speeding Machine. And so I hit him up, and he said he could take these grooves from a 43 thousandths to a 1 16th. And so that's not very big change, uh, but it is a drastic change when you're, when you're looking at the size of the rings side by side. Um, so 43 and I think it was 62 or 63 thousandths is actually what it is. So he actually built, uh, some custom jaws for to hold the pistons and the lathe. And I got him to do a video and his son, he followed him on TikTok. They're going to do a YouTube channel at some point as well. I got him to send me a clip of uh, a little tour of their shop. Y'all check this out real fast. What's going on guys? My name's Anthony and this is me and my dad's shop, RPM to be in a machine. We did some work for Turbo John, and he wanted us to give you a little tour of our shop, so that's what we're gonna do. So come on with us. Walking into the main part of the shop here, this is where we do all our machining, from boring to honing, to head resurfacing, block resurfacing, custom machining, balancing, line honing, lifter bushings, cam tunnels, you name it, we just about do it. The list goes on and on. We got the opportunity to do some work for John, we opened up the ring lands on these pistons for them. 
some custom jaws for our lathe, hand ground a tool, and opened up that ring land groove. And if we walk back here, we, this is where we do all our assembly. This is my dad, Mark, and he's working on a 496, adjusting some valves. Right next to him, he's also working on a 572 big nitrous motor. Back here, we just got done installing this, I can't say, size motor in this S10. It's going to be quite the ride. Back here, we do all our CNC machining from custom wrist pins, custom roller lifters, just about anything you want to be made. Finally, in the back here, this is our house car. This is a top alcohol funny car that we run a roaster body on. We've had some transmission issues with it, but we're getting it back together, plan on shaking it down next week and taking it to a match race in April. That's gonna conclude our tour here. We're located in Leland, North Carolina. If you wanna find out more about us, go find us on Facebook at RPM Speed and Machine. Thanks guys. But that was pretty cool. That was a good video. I really appreciate Mark and, and those guys down at RPM Speed and Machine for taking these things out. So we're going to reuse these pistons. So they're going to be good to go. I think we're going to be in good shape. Um, we're just going to uh, clean them up a little bit more. And, uh, you know, they look like you can see where the, the big lip was. I, man, I should have took a picture. Oh, well, you'll, you can see, if you look at old videos, you can see how much I knocked off of them. But probably knocked it down. The compression ratio, if I knock five cc's off of it, our compression ratio... With these gaskets, we got a uh, Clark gaskets over here, 62 thousandths gaskets uh, combined with everything we're doing. We ought to be probably in the 12.5 zone. Uh, the cc's on these heads are really, really big, 121 cc's. So when you do all the math and the short stroke, the four inch stroke, uh, we should be in good shape. So I can't, I can't wait to get this thing together. So let me show you. I'm going to gap some rings real fast. It's not for the faint of heart. Don't try this at home, kids. So there goes Mike's old cover and his new cover. And this is a Dana 60. Now those are, are pretty strong from what they say. They say they eat a lot of power though, right? Don't they rob more power than like a small yes, block Ford? Do. I don't know how much. I mean, it's gotta be something. Nobody ever has said. Right, they just say, maybe it's not. Maybe it's the free horsepower one. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so he's over there working on that one. I'm getting started now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and gap the rings. Uh, like I said, I've already got this on here. Um, the rings that we got were the total seals, and the total seals, file fit, 160 plus 5, 116, 116 is 316s. So, um, pretty easy stuff. I did go ahead and order this as well, this ARP. We're not going to be using this today, but these things make installing pistons a ton easier. And now, of course, this one is grooved on the bottom to accept the o-rings so it should go easier we've talked about that in the past if you have one that is completely flat on the bottom and you have o-rings in the block it'll hold this ring compressor off and guess what happens sometimes the rings will pop out uh, in between this and the block uh, when you're trying to get it in and you could uh, pinch a ring <laughs> this is the oil ring packaging so you got the the top rings the bottom ring and then the oil spacer ring there uh, so we are going to use the formula we're going to use for this one. We're planning on cramming the boost to this bad boy. So we're going to use the bore size, which is 4.60. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.009. And that's going to be our topping ring, ring gap. Uh, I've got to do a calculation. I think it was like 37 or so. And then the second ring we're going to make bigger. And so it's going to probably be two to four, two to four bigger. So if it's 37, it'll probably end up being like 39 or 40 on the second ring. And then we're going to be good to go. Now I was reading, uh, Total Steel actually had a video out that was pretty good. They were talking to a, an engine builder and they were talking about that same thing. Top ring being tighter than the uh, second ring. So top ring at one, second ring a little bit bigger. And then they said the top oil ring you want to actually have a little bit bigger as well. It needs to be at least equal to the size of the second ring. And the way the oil rings work is, uh, and basically the second ring is an oil ring. It's just an oil scraper. Then it helps the oil go in and it helps uh, clean the cylinders. And it also helps uh, with the oil pin, the oiling, because that's forced pin oiling from these grooves over here. So that is interesting. Uh, I have never, I have never, I always put these oil rings in and just make sure they don't butt up. But we'll look at it today and see how what kind of gap we got because I don't know it may be a lot or it may not be hardly any at all. So uh, let's start gapping some rings here, and they've got these things separated out. 
All right, guys, so you can clearly see these things that got them marked, which is good. Uh, second groove, very easy to see which one is which, and you can kind of see by the, by the actual color of the rings, too. There again, this is the hard steel one, the top one, and then your set. So it's a steel top ring. Um, you have to look at the ring, and you have to look at the instructions, because the instructions will tell you. Uh, you, you will see there's no gap on these or no dots, so you don't see a dot anywhere but I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see if I can focus in on it. So right there, if you look straight down, right there on the top versus this way, do you notice any difference? So it's looking straight down at it. It's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to see it, but there is a bevel on this top edge here. So this is beveled right there. So that bevel, goes up and you always got to look in the instructions and i'll tell you in the instructions which one it is so right there is your instructions it tells you top rings torsional and then the bevel goes up cylinder wall up second ring it depends on what kind of ring you got uh and then it's the same way I don't, honestly i don't even know what kind of ring that is i don't know if it's a uh, one of the napiers in my small block chevrolet it's a napier ring uh, which is that one right there and basically it's just like a, got a little hook on it that lets it grab the oil a little bit better. But we're going to be uh, doing these. Let's gap them up. I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys. So we got this top ring. I just snapped it kind of down in here in the bore. Um, it's not pushed way down in there, but I did line the grooves up. And so one of the things, I guess some people could do that. But what we always do is we take a piston. This is a piston we're using. So I got to be careful with it. I don't need to drop it. This is an old ring. And basically just shove it in there into the, the actual the groove, the second ring groove there is the one I put it in. And so what we do is we take this and then we slide the piston down in there. Now we have a stop. And so this is gonna make sure the ring is square in the bore. And now you can see, well, you can see a minute ago, there's no gap, but it's lined up perfect. And this is the same distance down in there. It's about an inch or so down below, whatever that distance is between that second ring and the top. So that's where the second ring would go. So now we're down in the bore. So you can see there is no gap here at all, none. So we're going to go ahead and start gapping these. Uh, the second ring is softer. So this is a softer material. So you have to be a little more careful with it. And so once you gap them, leave them in the hole. And so then we'll know, okay, this is number one, number three, number five, number seven. And then when we go to put the uh, rods back on the pistons, then we can go ahead and hang the rings on the pistons as well. And what it does is it just allows you to keep it. Now, all the bores are similar, and this is not an exact science for us because I can't make it perfect 37. Some of these might be 37. Some of them might be on the top 38. Some of them might be 36.5, and that's okay. You know, that's going to work out fine. Uh, the thing is, is you just got to get enough ring gap in there so that they don't butt. If that butts like that while you're running, most likely it's going to knock the piston top off. Uh, there's an old saying that says if they're too tight, everybody will know because it's going to blow up. It's going to knock the ring land off. It's going to smoke and blow oil everywhere. And if it's too wide, only you'll know because you'll put a little bit of extra oil in your catch can possibly. But, you know, that's a that's a maybe or maybe not as well. So uh, let's gap these real fast. I'm going to show you one real time how I do it. Well, uh, we know we got to take off 35 thousandths. We're going to use the side grinder. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to be very careful. And I'm going to gently grind it as square as I can. And you don't put a ton of pressure on it when you're pressing on it. If you put a lot of pressure, it will take a lot of material in a whole quick time. But if you put uh, too little pressure, then it takes a long time. But the, you want to go slow steps. And so my goal is uh, to get probably move about, about 10 thousandths at a time. Uh, and then we'll be set. So 10, 10. 10 and then like a final removal of like that seven thousandths or so and if we need to uh hand file it for the last like i said mike's got this thing over here but there again you know it's a pressure thing so you got to learn you got to figure out how to do it i mean it's got the thing here you got to hold it you got to you know push it up against it and then you hand turn it and it does it, it removes some material and you can see that's a little probably coarser than the one i've got probably this is the preferred method but we're going to do it the non-preferred method all right, guys. Well, here we go. This one, like I said, is going to be real time. We know we need to take off about 35 thousandths. So we've got our filler gauges here. So we got to get these on 35. So we got a, we're going to do um, 37. This is the top one. So this one is a little more difficult to actually cut. So you got to be careful when you're doing it. 
and then and I always do what I normally do is I will do the same one at the same time so I do all the top ones and then all the bottom ones that way you don't have to mess with your your uh, your gappers and you also get more consistent on the way you actually gap it so you can see I got my filler gauges here and so it's, if you press really hard, it's a 34, and then if it's a loose fit, it's 35, 36. So let's go one size just a little bit bigger. This is an older set of filler gauges, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's just hard to read the numbers, but that's okay. Because we can use a micrometer here. So here we go, so that's a 37, that's our 37. That we're going to do the top 36 really tight 30 35 and a half 36 but like where i like it is a little snug will be like 38 is where we come out there so here we go all right guys let's see what we got here so we're gonna do 37 38 uh and then 40. so this is the top one so what i do this is i'm just holding it i hold it by my side and So just try to keep it square. And I can feel the, the ring getting a little warm. It's not getting super hot. So I'm not putting a lot of material on it. You want blood? Not putting a lot of pressure on it. No, it's good. The heat is the heat in my finger is how I determine how, how long. But you do it with your pressure and the pressure and the uh the the amount of heat coming through the ring is how you know kind of when you stop. So now let me show y'all. So we got us a little bit of a gap there. Boy, would you look at that? And the ring gap is pretty, pretty close to being square. We'll do the finalize. Uh, we'll get it square the whole way in just a minute. So let's let's do this again. Mike's like, I can't believe you're gapping rings with a side grinder. Now, I used Randy's professional tool that he bought the other day, and it was okay, but not great. Okay, so now, let's see what we got here. Okay, so we have definitely opened it up. Uh, not enough. Something else you got to be careful of with your, when you stack these, if you notice down here at the bottom, they don't really line up exactly. So if you use this end here, you can tell. Okay, so... So we're almost at 25, almost. 25 will not quite go in there, but when you're checking them as a total, then you wanna do it here. But now we're creeping up on it. So we are creeping up on this gap. So now it's gonna be uh, going a little slower. And it does take a lot of material off quickly. If you press on it real hard, it really does. But there again, I'm not pressing super, super hard. So those are in there. And if you wanted to, but now we're dead on 25. So now we know we're creeping up on it. So we picked up probably two or three that time. Now remember, you can't ever add material back. So if you go too far, if you go a little bit too far, it's not that big a deal. If you go one or two thousandths off, it's not that big a deal, guys. It'll be okay. Professionals spend a lot of time gapping rings. A lot of time. This is a very time-consuming process. I'm not a professional. side grinder down while it's running fast <laughs> if you do it will take off <laughs> right oh we're getting close now boys i can all i got it almost down in there Mike's 
can't believe this idiot is Captain Reeves with a side grinder. I love that, yeah, I have. <laughs> That's okay, Randy's got gap with a side grinder too. I only did about half of them with the, the professional tool. And then I had to go back to the, the good old faithful method. So this is just, as you get it, when you get it real close here, this is where you have to. Take your time. get done with this then you need to take a, a hand file and smooth out the side that you cut a lot of people they grind on both sides which I mean I've never done that I only do one and from what I have seen it works fine boom we are there we're in that is a very tight very snug fit and if you look our gap is square and it's in good shape so all I need to do is take here and go in and just smooth these edges up and that one is done and I haven't heard anything I haven't made anything crazy it's been seven minutes to do one ring so you figure to do it this way is 15 minutes per hole so let's get going all right guys well the movie magic it actually is not taking that long because I haven't done the second ring yet second like I said second ring is gonna go a little bit faster but this whole side now is done so this is gap, so I'm gonna spin the motor around and I'm gonna do the other side. Go ahead and do the top rings on that. And I do, uh, when I get it close, you, I, I've got this little hand file here and this is what I will um, go and, and finish it, get the burrs off. And if it's a little snug, then I'll smooth it up on the edge with this, but just slowly taking your time and moving it. All right guys, so side number two is done. Look at those nice square gaps. If you take your time, you can do it. If you can't take your time, then it makes it a little bit more problematic. But now we're gonna go ahead and move to the second ring. So I'm gonna just push these down in there to get them out of the way. So I know which hole it stays in and we are going to move on to these at 40. All right guys, so here we go. So I got the second ring. So it, it already comes with a little teeny gap, but this is a Napier ring also. So let's see if I can get, get you so you can actually see it. See the little groove there? So that faces down on the piston. And what that does is that just isn't, it's like an oil scraper, essentially, is what it is. It's called a Napier ring. So this is a much softer ring. So you have to be much care more careful when you're gapping this one. So I've opened it up three more thousandths. So uh, let's do this. All right, guys. Well, it is done. The second ring, again, it files a lot faster. So you got to be a lot more careful when you're filing them. Uh, it's a little softer. So the Napier ring, you just got to be careful when you're doing it. So that is how you file fit ring the side grinder. Do it at your own risk. Not recommended for the faint of heart. Mike's been over there working on his tonight. And uh, I think I've been stressing him out a little bit with the side grinder. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out. They're all pretty close. I promise you they're all pretty close uh, to what they're supposed to be. Uh, so, all right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all soon. Big block Chevrolet, 532 cubic inches, coming to you soon. Later, guys.